Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm going to show you how to make a monthly age progress blanket. I believe that's what they call it. Um, basically, it's the thing you see all over <laughs> Instagram where you put the baby in the middle of the numbers and then you circle which number, how old the baby is every month. So here is where we're going to get started on Word program. This is the Microsoft Word app which goes with the OneDrive app, and we're gonna create the numbers in Bromello. Bromello, B-R-O-M-E-L-L-O, -L -L -O, is a free font that you can get. Just Google free Bromello font, and you'll see it's great. It's that country font that everybody loves, so stay tuned. Okay, so you're gonna need a fabric, the numbers after you've printed them, and some fusible interfacing. Uh, also known as fusible webbing, you can get it on the roll like this, or they sell it in the pack. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I want, I've decided I want four inch letters. That's about that big, and that's going to be perfect for, um, putting around the blanket. A blank document. We're going to put view one page and then home and then up here. Is it? Nope. Um, oh, ruler. Dar. Dar. So the ruler will show us when it's a four inch letter. Okay. So we're just gonna go one space, two space, three space, four space, five space, six space, seven space, eight space, nine space, zero. Okay. Then we're going to select all. I'm gonna go home. Oh, we had it all selected. Select all. I'm gonna change the font to Bromello. Oop. Was that not here? I thought it was on here. Hold on, let me see. Now we adjust the font size. Actually, I kind of like that better. I'm holding down the plus sign until it's big enough to read. I'm just going to custom margins, my margins. I'm going to go back and change the letter size. Ah. Uh, I accidentally just deleted them. Okay. Up there is an undo button. That's what I clicked. Don't accidentally delete them. <laughs> Make them bold. Hmm. They're not changing. Let's see. Okay. 
So I'm going to jump on here because all I'm doing here is I'm just playing with the different fonts to see which one I like. Because here's the problem I was running into. All of the letters seemed too thin to create cut out letters for us to sew onto a blanket. So as you can imagine, if a, if a letter is too thin, first of all, it won't really show up on an Instagram photo. But it also will be very difficult to cut out without without having like stability, you know, even with the fusible interfacing. So I'm trying to find a, fa a font that is thick enough. Um, and in full disclosure, I thought, like I said there, that Bromello was downloaded to my iPad. Um, it is not. It was on my laptop. And because that was the font that Eden had chosen for all the rest of her things, I wanted to surprise her to match the blanket. But I want to show you that I did first print out um, a, an appropriate sized um, font that I used that you can use for the blanket. If you are not familiar with Microsoft Word program, it is a very simple free app that you can get on I believe you can also get it on Android products, but I don't have anything Android to download it to. But I know you can get it on um, at the Apple Store. I mean, at you know, at the App Store. I'm sorry, not the Apple Store. At the App Store on your iPhone or iPad. I have it on both. And you sign in, you create a free account, and you sign in so that you could share. So if I could start something on my iPad, I can edit it and finish it on my phone, and vice versa. You can also use it to link to the internet on your laptop. So if you go on a computer, or, or desktop, if you go on a computer, you can also access the work that you're doing there. So often, I do stuff for Aunt Sue. I'll start it here. I'll finish it at her house on her computer because I've uploaded everything to the World Wide Web, all of my pro my uh, projects and stuff. All right, and all I'm doing is the same like I showed you before where I picked a font, now I'm just changing the fonts. I'm doing select all, and I'm testing all the different fonts um, and all the different sizes, and finally we picked one. Um, this one is sans handwriting, I believe, but um, you guys check it out play with it yourself. Um, like I said, I ended up going to my laptop where I had downloaded Bromello and I used that because that was the font that Eden had chosen for her other um, projects that she had asked me to make for the baby's room. And I wanted to surprise her and match the font. Okay. So I have an air printer, um, which is down under my table and there it is. If the Letters are not the size you want. You can always go back and adjust it to do a test print of one page and go back and adjust it. So this is my ironing pad. I have had this for a long time. We have never had an ironing board growing up in my family. We always ironed on a towel on the table. <laughs> so when I was excited to get this ironing pad, um, I am making sure I have enough fabric and enough fusible interfacing um, by laying the numbers out. One thing that I didn't do in the sample is I only did numbers 1 through 0. But I realized I needed to print an 11 and a 12 to do this particular uh, method. Um, because I was not going to be cutting out the letters from the paper. I was going to be doing transfer work. Okay, So that, keep that in mind. So you also want to print your 10, 11, and 12. Um, now what I'm doing is on the wrong side of the fabric, I'm going to take the bumpy side of the fusible interfacing, follow the directions with the package that you get, but most of them have the, um, the sticky material on one side and a, like a white sort of material on the other side. Now don't get what you would be like, um, like a stitch witchery, which is glue on both sides. You want to make sure that you avoid something like that. You want to get a fusible interfacing. Um, basically, this is, puts a, a thicker piece of fabric to give some stability to your fabric. There is many reasons we want to do this. First of all, we're cutting the letters kind of thin, so we want to make sure they don't come apart and fray. We want them to be able to hold together under the presser foot of the sewing machine. Um, and, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> and... Like I said, we just don't want them to flip flop around, especially when they are, um, end up being such little weird shapes. So now we're just going to do the basic graphite transfer method. You can use um, copy paper if you want. You can do um, some chalk. You can cut out the letters and trace them. It's totally entirely up to you. 
All I'm doing is that I'm rubbing a number two pencil on the back of all of the numbers and then I'm tracing them onto the um, surface of the fabric. One thing that might have been a good idea um, would be to do them backwards. So if you have the ability to print them backwards, um, you because it would probably show up on the fusible interfacing a lot better than it shows up on the fabric, okay? Now another thing is the fabric that you choose for your numbers, you want to make sure will show up on whatever fabric you choose for your blanket. Now, I'm using a white fleece because that's what they had on sale. <laughs> and um, everything will show up pretty nicely on a white fleece. But keep that in mind. If you're going to use a darker fabric, you might want to use white letters. If you're going to use... Um, a uh, pink fabric, you want to make sure you use a darker colored letter, something that will show up for the photographs. All right, and I'm just going to repeat the copying method for the rest. Um, when you cut these out, you don't need to leave a seam allowance because we're going to basically do um, a top stitch over it, um, so that's not necessary. And um, if you saw the uh, beginner sewing machine, um, video where um, I picked number, I think we're going to pick number 18. I pointed it out to you. It's real pretty. Um, but if you stay tuned for the next video, which is how to sew these on, the embroidery um, spacing and embroidery the letters, um, numbers, you'll see that next, okay? And now I'm just cutting them out. Also with the fusible interfacing, it does help cut them out much better, believe it or not, because you're not worrying about the floppiness of the fabric getting in your way. Sometimes when fabric flops over, it tends to get under the scissor. Um, you don't have to be, I don't say you don't have to be as careful, but you definitely could go a little faster. But when you're picking your letters, be mindful of the fact that you have to cut them all out and sew them all on. That's what the point is. All right. Now, one other thing we did that I don't know if, hmm, I don't know if it's going to be in this video, is we did the same thing with the words. We picked, I picked the word months and weeks because I wanted Eden to be able to use this for the first um, few weeks of the baby's life. So the, the uh, Luna, when she's two you know, two weeks, one week, two weeks, three weeks. Um, you often see months, but not always weeks and not always years. So I did was we printed out the words uh, months and weeks, and we made them, I put them on fleece so that they would lay on top of the blanket bottom so that she can show whichever uh, milestone she's hitting at that time. All right. And then I'm just going to continue to cut. So one tip I want to give you when you're cutting out the six, the four, the eight, and the zeros is how to cut the inside. Um, I know it's kind of maybe kind of obvious to some of you, but some of you may be new to this process. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you get to the very center of the, we're going to call the part that you need to cut out the hole. Okay. So you need to find the very, very center of the hole. And what you need to do is you just need to snip, uh, fold it in half and snip a little slit in the hole. And you're going to use this to insert your scissor to work out towards the edge, which is the inner edge of the hole. And you just be careful and go all the way around um, whichever hole it is. But you just want to make sure that you go to the very center, you fold your fabric in half and you give it a little snip, just enough to get your scissor in there. Okay. Also, if you're more comfortable using a smaller scissor for that, as long as your scissor is sharp enough, Go right ahead. The size of the scissor doesn't depend on make a difference to me. As long as it's sharp enough, that's what's important. Okay? And you want to repeat that same type of thing. But if you notice the nine, the nine doesn't have a hole because it doesn't really connect to the the top swirl doesn't connect to the um, side swirl. So we don't have to worry about that with the nine, but we did have to worry about it with the six, the eight, and the zero. Okay. Um, and then once you have them all laid out. Um, when you have them all cut out, excuse me, um, I'm going to ask you to join us for the next video on how to attach them and, and their, figure out their placement. Um, so I'm going to start wrapping this up. So if you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. 
any tips or suggestions, if you want any further, more in-depth tutorials on stuff. I, you know, I don't want to bore those of you who are more skilled, but I want to be able to give enough uh, lesson to those of you who are new to the process. So, um, again, I'm not trying to make it like too in detail, but I'm also trying not to make too vague. So if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like this series of how to make this milestone blanket. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. Okay? And as always, take care. God bless. See you next time. Bye.